Hello, I'm Lonnie with Untitled Nerd Network, and we're going to do something a little different today. I love, have always historically loved doing uh, full-length commentaries on movies, TV shows, things like that. I, this is something that I'm going to kind of throw out on an occasional basis and see what sticks. I'm going to be doing some uh, audio commentaries, just basic one-take audio commentaries on entire episodes and most of these are going to be like on Disney Plus or some kind of streaming service occasionally I might do a DVD but just want to uh, throw that out there and we will be having like the name of everything and all that good stuff in the uh, in the title that way you know you know which one you you know where to find it and where I watched it and all that stuff just to make everything easier but this is going to be season one episode one of the Simpsons titled Simpsons roasting on an open fire and uh, I'm going to give like a three, two, one countdown, and that'll make it to where you can hit play at the exact same time as me, and we can follow this together. So here we go. Going to be hitting play in three, two, one, play. Simpsons Christmas Special, which believe it or not, was really never called that again. It was called uh, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire. I don't know when they added that. I don't know if that was... Do they still do... Um... Do they still do concerts? Like chorus concerts where they just put random kids up there to sing? First appearance of Principal Skinner. Like I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure, but uh I feel like there might have been something offensive in this segment. She got Maggie in like the little star winter outfit. I can go ahead and say that looks like Ralph Wiggum, but he has a different voice and he looks slightly different. I'm not totally sure if that's him or not. I'd be 99% sure he, that was him. It always disturbed me how close this came to animated nudity. Huh. There you see Millhouse for the first time. Bunch of kids you never see again. There's one. There's one. He's a different color, though. Does anybody know where the Jingle Bells, Batman Smells lyrics originated? Like, was that, has that been going on since, like, the 60s? Or did that start more recently? Because it was going on, you know, as, when I was as young as kindergarten, really. See Homer there about to fall asleep. See, Snowball, they actually um they actually showed Snowball one at one point. I think like Lisa saw heaven or something like that. And like I feel like aside from being a Lisa being a vegetarian, that neither one of the kids, none of the kids, even hardly even Maggie has seen any character development. Like Maggie has. I mean hell Maggie shot Mr. Burns. I always thought there was a different voice actor voicing Homer in early episodes, but it turns out the voice actor that voiced Homer uh, was purposefully doing a different voice. <laughs> I 
They really focused hard on Lisa wanting a pony in early episodes. Like, that, that used to be all she talked about. And I feel like the episode where Homer uh, got her a pony and had to work all the extra jobs. I think that might have been one of the last times they really focused hard on it. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's funny how a lot of these episodes are so much more grounded early on. Didn't actually get to see the Remarges sisters right there, but. It's hilarious how. <laughs> Always the stereotypical sister in law questioning. Uh, which is funny because Patty and Selma never did well with men at all. You know, they're not ones to talk. Believe it or not, these two, for some goofy reason, they were very common. That uh, If one light was out, all of them were out. The circuitry or whatever in the uh, Christmas lights. We're at the... Uh, Six minute forty five second mark right now. <laughs> of course, you know Bart's already got it in his head. He's going to get a tattoo. You know, I've heard it's actually canon. <laughs> I've actually seen pictures to prove it. That um, underneath Marge's hair is rabbit ears. True story. Look it up. Do they have mall tattoo parlors? Like, believe it or not, like uh, maybe it's because I live in the Bible Belt, but they don't. I've never really seen a uh, tattoo parlor in a mall before. Seen them in little shopping centers and stuff, but never, never inside like a mall. <laughs> Like, how, what, what what kinds of places get holiday bonuses? Like, <laughs> like, Mr. Burns sounds a little different as well. I got, yeah, seriously, like how many how many businesses get bonuses at this point? There's always some disaster in a Christmas. Christmas is ruined. Wow. Of course, that's always how it happens, right? <laughs> I can go ahead and tell you. I can go ahead and tell you 100% that uh, that's not how they do it. Wow. Comes in with the empty jar. Boy, that's going to suck. And of course, <laughs> but that's how I would react. Absolutely. Like, there's no Christmas bonus. Marge is like, oh, we'll have to stretch it further. Of course, you know, Homer doesn't want to admit it. Now everything's just like, Gone to crap.
up coming up on that all important commercial break. It's like the downer ending to Act Two. Landers has a better like, and that was that they don't focus on that so much anymore. But um, the first few seasons, it was just a constant theme that you know the Flanders family had it so much better than the Simpsons. You know, about about the time, uh, a little bit before Ned's wife uh, was killed, they, uh, you know, started focusing a little bit less on that, and they became more equals to the Simpsons. Homer always had it like, oh, rough. It's hard to watch. <laughs> buying pantyhose and notebooks and stuff. I mean, hell, that's the kind of stuff I'd like to get, not, you know, outside of the pantyhose, but man, somebody bought me a bunch of notebooks and stuff for Christmas, I'd be all over that. Absolutely love that. Boy, they really push it that the Flanders have it better. And for some reason, he's only got one kid with him. I'm not really sure why. Maybe the other kid is with uh, with the mom. But holy crap! Like, did did they just like bring in the other kid later, or like what was originally the deal? Like, the Flanders always had two kids, or did that other one just get written in later? Rod and Todd. And I'm sure that uh, peppermint stick would make the beer taste like garbage. This is back when Barney had a different voice and yellow hair. Which I guess was just cheaper to animate. <laughs> this was true, too, because... Uh, I mean, I don't think they ever had, you know, stuff like this, you know, where they had like big uh, Santa Claus training outfits or anything. But I mean, you know, that would be like a uh, a mall thing, like a mall Santa thing or, you know, it, it almost stinks of a timeshare, you know, where, you know, you can come in and get this job and it's supposed to pay two hundred and fifty dollars. But, you know, that you get charged for your suit and you get charged for the training program and. You know, by the time it's over, you make less than a quarter of what you were promised you were going to be paid. They get you with that fine print. Seven hours late. Of course, this was before cell phones. She couldn't call Homer. <laughs> we're still like a good solid... Nine or ten years before the wide adaption of cell phones into the uh, human consciousness. First time we ever see Patty and Selma. Of course, you know, Patty and Selma, you know, he's already come in seven hours late, which tells me this is probably close to midnight. For some reason, the kids are still up. It must be a Friday night. And, uh, it's like going through all these. He ends up like stealing one from somebody's private property. Wow, dogs are going after him. He managed to get away. Wow.
I'm like, most of the kids that get on Santa's lap are like freaked out, shy, don't want to talk, or are crying. Uh, there is no way in the world I would eat a donut that had been in a kid's hand. <laughs> like, for real, there is no way. Is that really common? Like, do kids... Like, I'm asking a lot of questions that are basically rhetorical. I don't expect an answer. I mean, you can feel free to answer in the comments. Completely. But, um, like, is that a thing? Like, do kids... Do kids really, on occasion, um, dare each other to run up and pull on the beard of Santa or whatever? I'm like, 99% of Santas that I've seen lately have a real beard, so I don't think that crap would work. Besides, what happened with all the other kids out there? Did they not freak out? It's one of the few times that you see Bart truly respect Homer. <laughs> Santa yelling profanity. Okay, so he was supposed to get how much? $13. Yes, okay. So it was $120 and he got $13, meaning he got roughly 11% of what he was supposed to get paid. Maybe that's a job that, you know, the first year and you actually make your money by going year after year after year because you don't have to do the training anymore. You know, you've still got your suit from last year. <laughs> this is where they're going, you know. They're, they're going to go spend that $13 at the dog track. What 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 kind of uh, miracle happened to Charlie Brown at Christmas? Did something happen? Because I've seen that Christmas special a couple of times. I could not, for the life of me, tell you about a miracle. The happy little elves. That that was something that Lisa was really big on. Like she she seemed to have like the really really young kid likes early on. And then it seemed like, you know, after we hit the mid to late 90s, she developed more into like teen. And it's like she aged without aging. Yeah, like all the dogs are skinny. Greyhounds. <laughs> you know, they got, um, the, the creators of this show got a ton of positive mail from people who were, you know, because homeless greyhounds, you know, once they can't race anymore, they end up in shelters and stuff. And they, they got, the creators got some major, um, Yeah, they got like some major props for including this storyline. <laughs> I mean, and um, in like eighty nine or ninety, like I, I believe thirteen dollars could have bought some stuff. Hell, thirteen dollars. I know for a fact could have bought at least three Ninja Turtle action figures.
Wow. Like they even in the first episode, they immediately paint Lisa as very, very, very smart, or at least able to hold adult conversation, but you know, still likes watching the Happy Little Elves. <laughs> it's funny too because they never showed Santa's little helper. Like he never does good in this race. Wow. And <laughs> they lost. Wow, still going. Oh, man. Wow, they're out picking up like tickets to see if they've got a winner. Uh. Hey, oh, Barney made it. There's Barney with blonde hair and actually managed to get a woman because of his money. Look at the lesson that teaches. <laughs> of course the dude's like throwing rocks at him throwing rocks at the dog like what the crap or she hadn't even think about what might have happened to Santa's little helper if he hadn't run into the Simpsons Well, they basically accused him of cheating. God, everybody's like happy about it. Ah. Uh. It turned out to be like a great thing. Yeah, they always, they kept the name too. He was always sent as a little helper. It was interesting to know that, but yeah. Amazing. Well, this has been Lonnie with the Tuttler Network. Uh, you know, this episode, this episode gets probably, uh, I'm going to say like an eight out of 10. And this is just them doing a classic Christmas jingle as a family. God. Of course, you know, Bart knows all the extra stuff. So does Lisa. Lisa even gets in on it. Wow. <laughs> Was that, I guess that was the first time you had ever seen Grandpa Simpson. That's great. All right, y'all. Thanks for joining me for this. Not, not, not a lot. And, you know, I spent a lot of time actually watching the show itself. But, uh, yeah, maybe we can get together and do this again sometime. I'm Lonnie with Untitled Nerd Network. Thanks for listening. <laughs>